Are you listening? This is The Rob Scott Show. Damn. I mean, really, like, if we're not trying to change the world, what are we doing? Yeah. Sarah, how are you? I'm doing great. Yeah? How are you? I'm good. I'm excited to get this started. Yeah. I, I think I know what I want to talk about today. Do you want to get into something cool? Yeah. So w- welcome to The Ro- Rob Scott Show. Yeah. Um, we're super excited to have you listening to our podcast, and we hope that you both enjoy yourself and get something really valuable from us. 100%. Um, so I'm, I just want to go into this idea that most human beings are pretty consistently lost in thought. And many of them are not even aware of that, right? And most people think that's like the default way to be, that there's nothing wrong with that, that that's optimal. And then within that, most people are actually trying to um, think better or think differently or get somewhere else within thought. And a huge change, a huge shift with that, if people can get it, is that there is a different place to be rather than thinking all the time. It is this idea of really grounding your mind into experience or presence or being here fully, right? And if you're not capable of doing that, you end up, quote unquote, lost in thought. Does that make sense to you? It definitely does, yeah. yeah. And we often get this question from people who go through some of our, from our meditation program. They don't yeah. even understand what not thinking is because they can't distinguish between when they're having thoughts and when they're not. Yeah, and so this literally leads to feeling insane, right? And in, in some sense, I mean, for some of us, it leads to anxiety, overwhelm. It leads to those moments at night where you're up and you just kind of can't stop thinking. Um, one of the things that I talk about in that program, Back to Breath, which by the way is free, go check it out, go to backtobreath.com if you're interested. Um, it's a seven day meditation challenge uh, or mindfulness challenge that has you know, simple little audios to get started where you can just listen and you can set your own kind of challenge. We have a free Facebook group that goes with it. It's really cool. Um, but I talk about four levels of consciousness in that, right? And so it might be useful to kind of go through those for people here so they understand. Yeah, I definitely think so. Let's yeah. dive in. So level one is somebody who is thinking all the time, primarily, and they're not aware that they're thinking. There's nothing even to challenge there. They just think that's what it is, right? And it, it's... They don't even know that there's anything else going on. They're just in thought and they're not even, they're not even aware that that's what's going on. They're not self-aware at all. Okay. So it's just this natural, but sort of low level of consciousness, if you will, thinking all the time, one thought, next thought, next thought, next thought. And there's no even challenging of thoughts or anything. They just think what they're thinking is right. You know, they get angry a lot. They're, they're sure they're right all the time. Very much this will turn into a victim identity of why is the world against me and they're bad and they're bad and constant belief and opinion and all that stuff all the time. Right. Mm, autopilot or cruise control of the mind. Totally. And so next level up from that is somebody who's thinking all the time and they know they're thinking all the time. And, and this might be a place of actually more subjective suffering because they they've seen the meditator, they've seen the person who's more calm, they've seen the person that's not anxious and overwhelmed and thinking all the time, and they know that that's a thing, but they have no idea how to get there. So there's a whole lot more self-awareness, and they just don't have it under control, they don't know how to quote unquote stop thinking. So that would be like level two of consciousness, if you will, right? And I think that, I think of a lot of, that's where anxiety and overwhelm lives. When someone says, I'm very stressed out or I couldn't sleep because my mind was racing, you're kind of in level two, right? Because you have the awareness, but you're still suffering. Yeah. And so level three would be somebody who is gaining the ability to switch on to this other kind of mind. This other kind of mind is a mind that can be fully in experience. And by the way, every human being ha- that you know has an undamaged brain, it doesn't, it doesn't have to do with intellect, it doesn't have to do with anything, has the capability of using their senses to experience reality. And what I'd love to demystify here is what does it mean to stop thought? And what is it, what's the value of stopping thought? Like what, what is that value? And I'll finish up the, the next two levels of consciousness as I'm describing them here. But I think the the payoff here, the quick little 
gimme if you can grab it is that stopping thought is way simpler and different than most people think a lot of people will meditate for 10 years on a cushion and be wrestling with their mind that whole time and be getting these gaps of no thought but they're not exactly sure how that's happening they think it's because they're becoming quote unquote better at meditation or whatever and i'm here to share that we all can stop thought it's just a it's a movement of our attention uh, and it's it's doable by all of us and it's actually happening even to level one and level two people all the time They're just not aware of it and they kind of can't grab it and hold on to it in a way that's valuable so level three is somebody who Begins to use thought as a tool instead of thought being like The default way of being all the time and instead of thought running you unconsciously or thought thought running you consciously and not being able to do anything about it all of a sudden you can go wait a second I can put thought in its place I can challenge my thought, I can make my thought stop, and I can use my thinking way more powerfully as a tool, and yet I know it's not my complete way of being. I also have this other thing called experience, right? And then level four would be much more mastery of that, something I might call stillness in motion, or I might call it uh, an ability to really be grounded in presence even when you think, that that default moves from thinking to being, and it doesn't stop you from being in time and doing all these different things, but it does allow you to be deeply present, deeply arrived and grounded and in your experience much more deeply, even while you're thinking and negotiating and walking around and doing all that stuff. Whereas level three would be, uh, you're probably still wrestling with it, but you're gaining, it's, it's got a huge payoff. You're starting to do it, but you still find that you get lost in thought from time to time. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So if I say that to you, Sarah, is that, is that valuable all by itself? Because I've got more I want to share about that. But is that, is that describing that, is that helpful at all or no? It is. It is. And I like, to, I like to kind of, we are supportive of mindfulness and meditation, but I think a lot of the, the word meditation kind of can, can be confusing for people. And so- Or it already it, has a meaning. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it yeah. is part of it. So I think of these four levels in, if we want to be- set up an analogy for, for those listening. Um, if you go to the gym, you're training for something, you're super, super out of shape. You walk into the gym, you know, you got to work out for 30 minutes. Level one is you're putting in your 30 minutes. You're on a treadmill, you're sweating, you're breathing. You're like 30 minutes. I'm out of here. You know, level two is you're like, okay, I'm consciously going to do cardio or I'm going to weight lift. You know what you're doing more. You're not just trying to survive the 30 minutes. Level three, you're doing reps. You're, 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 you know, I'm lifted this amount today. Yesterday, I'm lifting this amount. You're actively kind of controlling how you work out. And then level four is that person who's like, I go to the gym seven days a week. I'm ready to run a marathon. I know which, you know, I know what, where I'm working yeah. out and what meditation is, is the, is the practice of being mindful of yeah. managing your mind. That's how I, I'm going to change those, that analogy. Yeah. Do a it. Little bit. So level one would be I don't even know the gym exists and I don't care. I'm all about the Cheetos and the couch and Netflix. And literally I'm not even aware that there's a gym. Level two is uh, I am, I know there's a gym and I'm not going there and I don't even really know how to get started. I don't even know how to ask for help. I know I should, I know it's good for me. I bet it leads to cool things, but I'm not doing it at all. Level three is I'm, I'm starting to go to the gym and I'm starting to get some benefit, but it's not my natural. It's still a little bit difficult. I'm still, you know, I'm still doing it, but I'm way happier. Like I'm more fit. I'm lighter. My body looks better, all that. And level four is not I'm a gym rat to the point where it's out of balance, but like I'm deeply healthy. I'm eating well. I'm really balanced. I'm super together. And the difference there is that one involves the gym and one doesn't right? One, one's there. In fact, that level four doesn't have any effort to get to the gym. Like if there's no gym, they're running outside or doing push-ups or fighting gravity in some other way because fitness is just a part of their being. Like there's no effort to do it. They just are fit and they continue to be fit. They're an athlete, right? Level three is there's no resistance to going to the gym, but they still maybe are only going three days a week or they're, you know, it's, it's a regular part of their life, but it's not, it's not all the way there yet. They're just still kind of beginner phase. And the other two levels aren't, they're not working the gym at all, right? One doesn't even know there's a gym and one is, I know there's a gym and I'm not going or I don't know how to go, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I didn't, and just to say, though, I guess you're thinking of your mind as the gym, I'm assuming. And I'm more just thinking of meditation can I'm be thinking used of at any level. 
So I'm thinking <laughs> of experience as a gym. So to your point, like meditation, having that connotation that people go, oh, I know what that is, or I even tried that. It doesn't work for me, or I didn't like it, or it's going to take a really long time to get a benefit, et cetera. What I want to do with this talk is say there's a quality of mind that you have access to right now that if you just move your mind there in, in even one moment, it's valuable because it, it disconnects that thinking, especially when that thinking is limiting or difficult or causing anxiety or whatever, right? So my own experience of reality has everything to do with my attention. And your attention is a place. Mm -hmm. Attention is a place. Yep. And, and so if I'm thinking of something in the future, you could literally imagine that I've, I've placed my attention in the fiction of my future or the imagination of my future. If I'm remembering the past, you could imagine that it's actually a location. I've sort of mm -hmm. placed my attention to my 10-year-old self or whatever, and it's a place where my attention is. If I'm thinking about something that doesn't exist, I often use the example of like a purple elephant jumping on a trampoline, right? If I do that, I'm, I'm in my imagination and it's another place where my attention is. Well, as we're thinking, right, what's the difference? Even if it's time-based, even if it's past or future, and, and I'm not saying present because that's actually not time-based, that's here. But if it's time away from here, past or future, it requires thought to get there. Like mm -hmm. I have to model something. I have to think of something. Well, all of imagination is thought also. So all of that is thought. And that's where most people are living. And in doing that, they're not ever actually here. And so that sets up this treadmill of time that actually sets up this, quote unquote, I'm not, I'm not there yet mentality, which is a, a really common human definition of suffering, right? We get, well, and can we land on that for a minute? Yeah, because sure. like, let's have our, let's have our listeners realize that if you're always thinking I'm excited for, let's just, let's make it the easiest scenario, right? I'm going out to dinner tomorrow with friends. I cannot wait to go out to dinner with friends, right? So your attention, your thoughts are in another place. They're in the future. When you get to that dinner with your friends, what is your mind going to do? If you're teaching your mind to live in a different spot, the thing you're so excited for, when you get there, you're going to miss it. Yeah. And that's because you're thinking of the next bummer. day or you're and thinking that's the best case. <laughs> yeah. Or you're thinking, what are they thinking of me? Or you're judging the situation or you're doing something else in thought because what you've let atrophy is literally this very different part of your brain that lights up when you're actually in experience. And so to truly feel joy deeply, you have to be with the moment. Like even if I'm laughing with friends, right? That moment of just totally having a blast with friends, I'm laughing. As soon as I realize I'm laughing, what the brain often does for normal humans or on those lower spectrums of consciousness, if we just call them lower, those different ones, those ones and twos, all of a sudden I judge it and I go, God, this is so much fun. How do we recreate this in the future? Guys, we don't get together enough. This is great. And it doesn't mean you're immediately sad, but the actual joy kind of dissipates because you've moved into thought. You're now judging the joy instead of actually being in the joy, right? So an enlightened person, without taking away the mystical, I, I think you know Buddhism and people that talk about enlightenment have done a huge disservice making it so special and permanent. And it's like another lie of this future way of being because if we're ever going to be enlightened, it has to happen now. It's not about a path. It's about a different way of being in this moment. And rather than making it even permanent or anything like that, it's something that we can express more or less of in any moment, right? We, we're either acting kind of more enlightened, more aware, more awake, or less. We're more lost. We're more addicted. We're more suffering, right? And so um, this, this treadmill of time, to your point, we get this atrophying of the part of our brain that's actually good at being grateful, being present, being full of joy. And we get this more anxious brain that's like, how do I create more joy? How do I get there? And what that implies is that I'm not okay where I am. This is not okay. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not funny enough. I'm not okay enough, whatever. And where's this all happening? It's happening in thought. It's happening in my own judgment all the time, right? And so what am I doing? I'm trying to get quote unquote there. But what you realize is there is no there. It has to happen here at some point, right? So what I always love to say is we're not trying to get there. That's an illusion, right? What we're actually trying to do is get here, but get here in a way where here's amazing, right? Here's right. happiness, present fulfilled enough, right? Now, can I always judge this and want more? Of course, but that's the suffering mind. That's the mind where it's like, I don't have enough friends. I don't have enough money, whatever. But that switch to experiencing what is literally in our sensation. You know, Eckhart Tolle talks about uh, the present moment as being this doorway to waking up. Well, what is that? What is the present moment? Present moment is truly 
what does your breath feel like right now? What do your feet feel like right now? What is looking at that sunset or that building across the way? What is really looking at that like without the judgment and the thought about it, actually being with what is? So which you would call sensual. Sensual, right? So, and which we weirdly kind of equate with sexuality somehow. And I don't mean right. that. I mean literally in the senses, mm -hmm. right? Just moving your brain to what are your senses experiencing right in this moment? And watching the qual learning to watch the quality of how we then judge that and qualify it and make it bad or good or whatever, right? We slam it into duality, okay? Which we can mm -hmm. talk about duality and non-duality another time, right? But if we, this idea of experience, thinking versus experience, the, the doorway to that and the payoff, what I'd love people to get out of this is that if you just move, since your attention is a place, if you were to learn that you, as you move your attention, it moves your experience. It moves, if you're thinking about a different thing, it will change your experience based on that thought. If you think of something horrifying, you'll feel more horrified. If you think of something more full of gratitude, you'll feel more gratitude, right? So our thinking drives these experiences. But what really is amazing is if we can actually come into the moment, get back to the present, really be in the divinity of this moment, right? The real, special, actual place, not our own separate thought, that's kind of away from isness, away from everybody else, but grounding back with where everybody really is and noticing what does that feel like. And what you'll find is if you don't judge that, it starts to become really beautiful, right? So as I learn to actually be with my breath, at first it's incredibly boring because my brain's like, where's the payoff? <laughs> but eventually what you'll do is the gaps become really calming, really beautiful, really amazing. And so you can totally experience this in any moment, right? You can just say, wow, I'm thinking, drop that thought. And if I were to say to somebody, stop thinking, almost nobody knows how to do that. What does that mean? What's the command to stop my thinking? Well, here's what it is. This is the shortcut. This is like the payoff maybe for this whole episode. To stop thinking, all you have to do is move your attention to a sensation because mm -hmm. that's not thought, that's experience, right? So if I actually, and the one that's always moving tends to be our breath, but it could be the tingling sensation in your hands. It could be what your feet feel like on the floor. And literally as I'm describing these, feel free to dive in yourself in this moment while I'm talking to notice what does your breath feel like as your belly expands? What does your breath feel like as it goes past your nostrils or your lips? right? What do you, what is that tingling in your hand feel like? And then notice as you notice that tingling in your hand, you're not thinking, right? I'm not asking you to qualify or judge that feeling, literally experience that feeling. And you may notice that your whole system begins to calm down. You start to be more at ease and you've just woken up. You've just literally enlightened yourself because you've left this delusion of judgment and thought and become present. And that's really all it is. Now, as you do that, it can get more beautiful. Your, that center of your brain light, lightens up, you know, lights up, gets more powerful. The experiences can become more beautiful, more full of joy, yes. But the beginning of that is just learning that attention is a place. Stop placing it willy-nilly. Stop letting it be all over. Gain a little bit of control. And then there's all these other benefits of doing that as well. Definitely, definitely. And I, I have a, a story I'd like to share. I was recently... Um, on Amtrak, I took an Amtrak train through the Sierra, through the Sierras, uh, for my birthday. And I, I reached a point I'm on a moving train. I've got all this beautiful scenery and I'm like, I need to take some pictures. Cause obviously, you know, you gotta, oh, yeah. in this day and age, you gotta brag a little bit on social. So I'm taking pictures. I'm on a moving train though. So my pictures are not as good as what I'm visually sensing with my eyes. Yeah. And I'm missing it because I'm not not in the moment of where I'm at, I'm trying to take pictures. So I finally, I was like, I'm going to put my phone down. I'm just going to sit. I'm going to stare at the window. And because I'm on a train, it didn't matter whether I was looking and trying to take pictures and missing it, or if I just sat and enjoyed it, I got to where I was going. Because another thing that, that we, we like to say, Rob likes to say is you're always, it's always now. You're always in the right spot. It's always now. I was always in the right spot. I could have ridden the train looking through my phone out the window and missed all the beauty. Or it could have been in the sen senses. And it, your brain often wants you to not experience it's going and, and you can miss out on the beauty of things if you, if well, you it's let trying, yourself. It's trying to get some future payoff, right? You talked right. about, it goes to like, won't it be great when all my friends get to see how great this is on Insta? That will give me, and we don't really think that all the way through, but what's really happening there is I'll get social credit. I'll get, you know, I'll, it's, I'll be popular in some way. Someone will like this and love it, but it's not even in this moment. And by the way, when you get there, it's nowhere near as beautiful as actually just taking in 
right. experience, right? Really feeling it and, and having that moment like with the beauty of business, right? Going like, God, like fucking beautiful. Like mm -hmm. this is stunning and, and, and I'm so grateful to be here and all that. If we don't have that quality, right? If we don't have that ability, we're missing what I would call the wealth of being alive, right? We're, we're constantly in this lack state of I'm not enough. I'm not there yet. It's got to be better. And that's a phenomenal example because we're, we're doing that all the time. And to your point, you're already on the train. It didn't matter. You're getting where you want to go. So what's the quality of your experience? Exactly. Through that and I moment? think of that like the treadmill of time. I mean, life, you can't stop time. Yeah. Time and so, is going, it's moving. So yeah. you can choose how you spend that time. And so if we go thought versus experience, which is maybe the point of this mm -hmm. talk, and we'll mm -hmm. wrap it up right here, right? We'll just, we'll, we'll end it here. You could have spent that whole train ride thinking, 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 thinking. And some of those thoughts might've even been good, right? They might've right. been productive and good and okay, and that's fine. Um, but the fact that you gave yourself some time to be in experience, you light up when you talk about it. It's a more beautiful way of being, right? It's a more fundamentally happier more connected way of being. So what I'm putting out into the world with this talk is if you're not capable of that, work to become capable of that because you are missing and you're, you're going to, you're going to die one day. I hate to give you the bad news, right? This, this time oh, is, is happening. I know, I know it's a <laughs> hate to go there, but like, it's true, right? Like that's going to happen. And so what's the, from now until then, what is going to be the quality of your life? Not the quantity. It, it almost doesn't matter if it's a year more or a hundred years more, or we figure out some tech and some medicine and it's 300 years more, what, what's the quality of that time, right? Are you capable of making it really high quality, really beautiful? I hope that you can. I hope that you learn how. Um, one of the and ways- a great place to start? Yeah, one of the ways is our, is our seven day free, totally free. Totally uh, free meditation or mindfulness challenge, right? It's seven days. Again, we have a free Facebook group that comes with it. You can do that or not do that. It's just a bunch of audios. It's got free trainings. It's got really cool ways. And I will say that people have actually said really, really sad people before. They've written in, hey, I was considering suicide before I did this. And they didn't commit suicide because they did this program. Now, if you're you don't have to be suicidal to check this out. This is, this is literally for you. If you just want to start getting some simple tools and each day it's, I don't know, a seven to nine or 10 minute audio from me. It's where really I'm useful. If you've already been a meditator, if you've never meditated, if you're just trying yeah. to strengthen your mind and it's appropriately called back to breath. So take yeah. that away because so back to breath.com uh, that will forward you over to my member site and you can sign up for your free account and start that challenge right away. So listen, thank you for your time and attention today, Sarah. Thank you for doing this with me. This is awesome. All right. Talk to you on the next one. Talk to you again soon. All right. Be kind to yourself and everybody else. Bye-bye.